Welcome to Shanghai, China, the bustling metropolis with a population exceeding 24 million people. Shanghai is the economic powerhouse and global financial hub of China and stands as a symbol of the country's rapid modernization. As a tourist in this city, you're going to find a limitless amount of things that you can do when you're exploring the beautiful city of Shanghai. Let's jump right in. Number one on the list is to visit the Bund, which is probably the most famous spot for both tourists and locals in Shanghai. The Bund provides incredible 360 degree views of the city and of course the iconic Shanghai skyline. We've got the radio tower, no t TV tower I believe it's called, largest and tallest tower in all of China and then a bunch of smaller uh, buildings right there. This attracts visitors throughout the day and night. I mean, it's the middle of the day, the work day here. Everyone's out here taking photos and checking this place out. It's advisable to plan your visit during the day to witness the city's skyline illuminated and experience that fast paced energy. And of course, you'll wanna make a trip back at night and experience the dynamic atmosphere of the city's skyline and feeling this place coming alive. Some people would argue that at night is even better than during the day. I think both of them have their own, let's say unique competitive advantages, but wait until you see the skyline. I'm just building up some excitement. I should also mention that at nighttime, it even draws more people than during the day, so you will find crowds of people. So if you're watching this video, it means you're most likely interested in traveling to China. And if you didn't know, traveling to China can have some challenges, some of them being social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, Google. All of these sites are actually blocked if you're using typical Wi-Fi or a local SIM card. As I've been exploring all around China, I haven't had to deal with any of those issues. I use Instagram all the time. I use Facebook. I use Google no problems at all. And the reason why is because I've gotten set up with my AirAllo SIM card. What is AirAllo? It is an eSIM which connects you to the local data networks and you can get set up with your SIM before you even leave to China in this case. But AirAllo works in countries all over the world, over 200 countries and regions. So you're going to be set no matter where you're going. All right, so watch how fast this is, my friends. Once you've downloaded AirAllo, you open up the app, you're going to type in the country name, in my case, I am going to China. Now, we're just going to go ahead and select the lowest plan here. One gigabyte, seven days, only five bucks here. Hit buy. Boom. We now have the eSIM. And activate eSIM. All right, cellular setup complete. So now when I fly to China, I can just land there and I've got data. And so that's how easy it is to set up the eSIM here. And I use AirAllo because they've been reliable for me all over the world. And I know they're going to be for you guys as well. So don't forget to use that code I have for you guys to get $3 off. It's free money on the table for you. And so thanks so much. Let's get back into the Shanghai things to do. Number two on the list is to visit the Oriental Pearl TV Tower. And this tower is one you often see in photos showcasing the Shanghai skyline thanks to its unique appearance resembling a towering spaceship with a pinkish purple hue. You can explore beyond the tower's base by taking an elevator all the way up to the top to experience a completely different view of Shanghai. Here it is my friends, views of the whole Shanghai. This is insane. Oh look at that, we've even got the tower right there shattering right into the distance all the boats coming in and out if you're afraid of heights i wouldn't recommend going to where i'm about to tell you is my favorite part of the tower on one of the two levels when you go up to the top you will find a 360 degree view of the city and when you look down at the floor you'll notice it is see-through that's right there is a glass floor with a full drop that you can see all the way down to the ground many 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 meters below you Ooh. <laughs> so if you're scared of heights, this may not be your favorite, but for me, it was so much fun to walk around and experience this. I would recommend visiting during the day due to some of the evening smog that might make it a bit harder to see the skyline. Midday is when we went and it was a fantastic time to experience Shanghai. And also I can mention that inside of the tower, you'll be able to find various attractions, grab some souvenirs, take some photos. They have telescopes, so a whole bunch of different things that you can do while you're in there, as well as even have a meal up top if you're looking to spend a couple extra dollars up there. Or shall I say Chinese Yuan. Number 
number three on the list is to visit People's Square Park. This park is situated in the middle of Shanghai and it's a spacious and impressively designed park. The blue asphalt seems like it's gonna lead us to somewhere interesting. This place is actually known as uh, People's Park. So it's quite a unique place. I mean, just being in the city and having all this, especially designed in a way that's it feels very much like nature, but also very much created. When you stroll through the park, you'll notice how it gives you a feeling of being in nature. The city sounds are still audible, and occasionally you can see some of the buildings peeking through, especially as you approach the park's edge, but it still does pretty much feel like it's out in nature. It's a special place to walk through, offering a taste of nature, and you'll find a lot of locals come and visit this park frequently for various activities from exercising, hanging out with friends, and even dancing. Number Number four on the list is to visit the famous Nanjing Road shopping area. This long strip leads directly to the Bund and here you'll find many different types of tourist friendly restaurants. Look at this, this is what we came here for. This is the uniqueness of being in China. The amount of colors and things going on in here. While they might not always offer the most traditional or top tasting foods you can find in Shanghai, you'll definitely get a wild variety of places to visit and some really exotic foods. More importantly though, at Nanjing Road shopping area is this is the shopping paradise. Restaurants are just something you'll come across mixed in along the road and I wanted to mention that first because I like food more than shopping most of the time. Yeah we're just walking through this whole area. We've got Subway here, we've got Pandora, Sephora and M&M's. This place is like basically half westernized and the other half it's still local. You look on this side you have all of the uh, Mandarin calligraphy on this side and yeah then this side it's like all these American brands. But here you'll find a ton of different places you can go shopping at from malls built into here to international brands to local brands and so much more it truly is a shopper's paradise. Number five on the list is to take the sightseeing train from the Bund. There's a really cool underground train that will take you through the river and of course it's deep down under where all the boats are sailing. Inside the train you'll experience a very unique atmosphere as you cruise through the tunnel you'll be immersed in light shows and many different scenes bringing you through almost this otherworldly experience look at this the, the light shines all the way down in there from those spotlights in my opinion it's a much more exciting experience than just taking the traditional means of transportation like a taxi or ferry from one side or the other and the setting inside the train is well crafted and brings you right outside of the oriental pearl tv tower in just a few steps it is worth mentioning that on this train you can conveniently purchase tickets for both the oriental pearl tower as well as the sightseeing train which might save you a couple yuan Number six on the list is to visit the Mingzhu Roundabout Elevated Walkway. Now, I included this one because you won't often find it in other travel guides, but it's a unique spot worth exploring. And what sets this place apart is its futuristic design, which you'll notice as you're strolling around. Isn't that insane? Besides a couple of people's voices, I don't know if it's just the acoustics here or if there's so many EVs, a couple maybe gasoline cars in here. Well, you just can't hear much. Another thing to point out is the prevalence of electric vehicles in China is around 60% of vehicles are electric and 40% are running on gasoline or fuel. The reason why I'm mentioning this here is because the walkway surrounds a roundabout which normally you would expect to be quite noisy from traffic. However, in this case, it's often surprisingly quiet which sets it apart from many other cities which generally have a higher proportion of gasoline vehicles. You know, when we go to India, we go to Sri Lanka, lots of horns. There is no horns you hear around here. My ears would be bleeding. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, exactly in Delhi. This unique experience is enhanced by the towering buildings surrounding you. And once again, this place will offer you a beautiful view of the Oriental Pearl TV Tower. It's a place where the future is meeting the present, offering a glimpse into the city's commitment to sustainable urban living, and it truly makes you feel like you're at the center of Shanghai, where everything is happening. Number seven on the list is to visit the Shanghai Tower, which is another viewpoint with similar views, but in this case, you're actually much 
higher up than the Oriental Pearl TV Tower. The Shanghai Tower is one of the tallest buildings in the world, standing at approximately 632 meters or about 2,000 feet, making it taller than the Oriental Building by quite a bit. So guys, we are walking up to the Shanghai Tower right here. This is the third largest tower in the world. Ahead of it is Burj Khalifa at number one and a very large tower, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, in Malaysia. So I went up to the Shanghai Tower right around sunset and it was a really beautiful experience which brought me much higher than of course the viewpoints that I could see from the Pearl TV Tower. But the one downside I experienced was that at sunset there was a bit of smog that obstructed the view so you couldn't see things as much and in some areas there was a bit of a reflection from the sun however it still was a very beautiful sunset to experience yes yeah, so we're cruising around i will say these views are able to bring you like much further out just been thinking about when i was at the tv tower you had a lot less obstructing views and you can see just that much further out the nice part about sunset is you'll get you know to see the place lit up in this golden tint but the unfortunate side is that it also lights up some of the pollution in the air and that gives it not as clear of a feel as we experienced at the TV Tower. One additional point I'll mention is you can pay to go to the very top of the Shanghai Tower, which is a few floors higher than the viewpoint. And here is actually an enclosed area, so you won't be able to see outside, but it's the highest point a tourist can go. And inside here, you'll see that the building features a huge tuned mass damper, which is a large metal pendulum-like structure. The damper plays a crucial role in keeping the skyscraper balanced and stable, particularly during the windy conditions. The tuned mass damper also helps reduce the building's swaying motion, ensuring the structural integrity and occupant comfort. The cool part is, as a tourist, you can go up here and see a light show inside and learn about how the massive tower is able to withstand these strong winds through a presentation they share with you. I would say my experience was, if you have a lot of time on your hands and you have time to experience a lot of Shanghai, definitely head up there and check it out. But if you're on a tight schedule where you only have a couple days, you don't need to make a trip up there as it wasn't as exciting as some of the other things on this list of things to do. Number eight on the list includes visiting Disneyland! And if you're from America like I am, you may have been to Disneyland or Disney World in Florida or California, and it is a very special experience. But when you visit the Shanghai version, you're going to get a different version, mainly for the reason being that the Disney characters are speaking Mandarin, which makes it a pretty cool and unique experience. My friends and I explored all over the park. We went on some wild roller coasters. There they go. Oh, see you later. <laughs> this is gonna be like the craziest ride. All right, I must say, as someone who's gone to Six Flags Great America and some other Six Flags around the world, Disneyland has absolutely leveled them up. Oh, oh my God. And just simply walked around, met some locals, and tasted some delicious food. Mm. It tastes like Thanksgiving. This year I didn't make it back to the US for Thanksgiving, so we're having it a bit late. That is freaking delicious. And overall, I would say the Disney World experience in Shanghai was a great full day spent because we had a week of time of exploring. If we were limited on time, it wouldn't be as much of a priority because it's obviously not super unique to Shanghai in itself. But that being said, it was a really fun day to get that adrenaline rush, experience multiple different impressive rides around the park. But one I wanna mention that stood out to me was the Pirates of the Caribbean experience, where they have a boat that takes you through a blend of virtual reality and realistic scenarios that represent the Pirates of the Caribbean. It was definitely one of the coolest and most well done rides that I have seen in the theme parks around the world. So if you guys have a chance when you're at Disney World, definitely stop by and check out the Pirates of the Caribbean. Number nine on the list is to experience a food tour. 
I wish I would have done this at the beginning of my trip, but I happened to do this towards the end. And I stumbled upon this food tour through a get your guide booking. And no, this is not a sponsored video, but yes, I've included the link so you'll be able to find the same tour. And I do get a small kickback that supports this channel if you guys want to book it through my link. That being said, even if you don't book it through my link, I still would highly recommend you doing this food tour because it is awesome. The local guide is a really welcoming guy and he shares you everything you want to know about food and China in itself. Me and Jim, my new friend here from Shanghai. We love China. Shanghai, let's go. And also Shanghai food. Yeah. Shanghai food, really good. So we're going to be going on an amazing tour with him today. He's one of three different guides, so you may or may not get the same guide that I have, but it sounds like all of the guides are really awesome and will show you such a beautiful experience. Anyways, if you're like me, one of the biggest reasons why I was excited to experience China was to see how Chinese food compares to the Chinese food I've had in different countries around the world. And this experience on a food tour takes you straight in. And our guide was amazing because he gave us a view of what China is like beyond the headlines and misconceptions held by people from around the world. The tour took us not just through a culinary adventure, but also through a full on cultural immersion. And the one thing I appreciated about our guide is he was so helpful in sharing us a real life inside look of what China is actually like, what it's like to be a local, what it's like in real life versus what we're hearing on the news. So overall, that made it a really special experience. And more importantly, on the food side, he brought us to some really cool places that you would never be able to find on TripAdvisor or any other places. And it brings you right next to the locals where they have their food. And wow, it was delish. Number 10 on the list is to experience a Chinese massage. A massage in China can vary in many different types, but the one my friend Harry and I had was genuinely unlike any other massage I've ever experienced. And what makes it better is that even these massages are reasonably priced for the value of money and how good you feel after getting the massage. Harry and I did full massages there where they first start off with doing a foot massage and kind of working the way up the legs and cleaning them. And then they actually take you upstairs where you'll find bars hung from the ceiling. We laid down and they climbed on our backs. Now the pressure isn't as bad as you might imagine because they are partially hanging from the bars as they're walking across your back but it was really incredible at how much it pushed down into our muscles and reached parts that other massages that I've experienced weren't able to get, so. <laughs> this is one of the most exotic massages just in the way the procedure was done, but also I felt so good after a long day of walking. So if you're into massages, definitely check this place out. Number 11 on the list is to visit the Jingan Temple. This is the most famous temple in Shanghai and it really stands out from the city. The cool part about this place is you get a mix of modern buildings surrounding it while you also have this traditional Chinese yet modern architecture making a really unique blend on the Shanghai skyline. When you visit the temple, you'll be surprised because as soon as you walk in, you'll realize there are a lot of things happening. And what I mean by this is there is a centerpiece in the middle of the temple grounds and it's a sight to behold as locals and tourists toss coins into the burner, perhaps in hopes of making a wish for good luck. Oh, and that one's coming down. <laughs> it's a really cool experience because you just see so many coins flying up in the air coming from every direction and so you definitely need to watch out or you might get hit by a couple of Chinese Yuan. The Jing'an Temple was first built during the Three Empires period which was around 220 AD to 280 AD and has stood tall for more than 780 years. The Jing'an Temple existed even before the city of Shanghai was established, which really gives you an idea of how old this place is. And today, it's best known for being a place of worship in the Chinese metropolis. During its long history, the temple has been destroyed, rebuilt, and renovated many, many times, and it is most famous now for its bronze bell and Buddha statues. 
Number 12 on the list is to do a river cruise. And I'll tell you straight away, this is the one thing I did not have time to fit in my schedule, but it's what I really wish I could have done because I love riding on boats and seeing cities from the water. So I'm hoping that if I share this with you, you'll get the opportunity and you can comment below how you enjoyed it. So anyways, there are a ton of different river cruises and a lot of people gave me recommendations when I was at the hotels and locals as well that I really should experience what Shanghai is like from the water. And you've got a couple different options. You can take a ferry across, which is going to be your cheapest way of doing it. Or you can even do a full on dinner cruise at night, which will immerse you in this beautiful Shanghai skyline with some delicious food and cocktails. Although I couldn't make it this time, a river cruise is definitely going to be on my list for the next time I'm in Shanghai. Number 13 on the list is to visit the so-called Science Museum, which is actually a Chinese market. So the reason why it's called the Science Museum is because the subway stop is where the Science Museum is, but actually down inside the subway station, you will find a huge Chinese market where they sell tons of product. Here, we're at one of the most famous fake markets in Shanghai called the fun collection. I will say you need to go in there with your bargaining hats on because they sell tons of product. Some are copies of name brand products. Some are just random souvenirs or clothing or apparel or bags you can buy that aren't branded. But when I asked to buy a pair of Air Force Ones there, the retail price they were trying to start out with the negotiation was the same price as buying a real pair. So expect to maybe negotiate between 60 to 90% in some cases, maybe not all cases, just do that conversion on your phone because I'm sure there's some tourists that don't do a conversion and they end up paying so much more money than the item they're buying is worth. I give these supplies. Oh. That's as much as the real ones. No. Yeah. No, I'm not even that these. No, no. How too much? expensive, too expensive. And don't worry if you're not looking to go buy copies and fake items. You can absolutely go down there and buy souvenirs and many other types of items. It's not just copies of other brands. It has a whole bunch of different options down there. Number 14 on the list is to go a little bit outside of the main Shanghai area and by a little bit outside I mean about an hour and a half by taxi or maybe two hours by subway and when you arrive there you're going to find a place called the Paris of China. The reason this is the Paris of China is there is a massive Eiffel Tower sitting in the middle of the city. The plan here was to build a mini Paris and it actually does feel like that. There is a long strip that leads up to the Eiffel Tower and you have this French style architecture, this European feel, yet you have the Chinese locals who fill the streets there. It seems the project did not go as planned as it's quite a quiet area for how big of a project this was to build. But nonetheless, we really enjoyed exploring, meeting some of the locals and trying tons of delicious street food and meeting with some of the locals to finish off the night by doing some dancing right in front of the Eiffel Tower. And last but not least, number 15 on the list is to experience a Chinese hot pot dinner. This is an absolute must and make sure you grab a couple friends and sit down and have a big stomach because it is time to eat. Boys, mm -mm, good. Chow time, chow time, chow time, chow time, chow time, time. So what is a Chinese hot pot? It is basically a pot that sits right in between you and the people across from you in the center of your table. And it brings cooking mixed with a restaurant atmosphere. So you get that restaurant quality food, but you're actually doing the last step of preparation, which is taking some of this incredible meat tossing it in, cooking it to your desired perfection, and having a feast. Now, whatever's in here is uh, super spicy, but I'll tell you, it is freaking delicious. Just a nice oily taste, burns your lips, burns the inside of your mouth, on your throat on the way down. You're probably wondering, how does that taste good? Oh, let me tell you, that just makes the flavors pop. Overall, the food you'll have is absolutely delicious. It was one of my favorite meals that I had. And so if I go back to Shanghai, it's probably going to be one of the first places I go if I'm with some friends. And that concludes our list of 15 of the best things that you can do when you're visiting Shanghai. But this massive city has even more to offer, so I've included some additional links down in the description below that'll give you some more ideas on things you can do when visiting Shanghai.